is algebra? Where did it come from? And how it is developed over thousand years to its modern form? The story of our search to answer these questions is the story of algebra. In this story, we will see how algebra is developed by great men of mathematics in pursuit of restoration, proof, and absolute perfection. Our story begins with the word algebra, which came from the Arabic word algebra in the title of a book written by a Persian mathematician, Al-Khwarzmi, in 9th century. Algebra means restoration or finding the values of unknown variable x in equations. The values of these unknown variable x in equations are called solutions, roots, or zeros of that equations. The highest power of the unknown variable x in equations is called the degree of that equations. Equations of degree 1 to 5 are called linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, and quintic equations. The story of classical algebra is the story of finding the values of these five equations. In his book of algebra, Al-Khwarzmi described a general method or algorithm to solve linear and quadratic equations, different methods of algebra to solve quadratic equations are taught in school, such as factorization, formula, completing the square, and drawing a graph. After the algebra of linear and quadratic equations, mathematicians started to learn cubic equations and their solutions. However, unlike linear and quadratic equations, a formula to solve general cubic equation was difficult to find. Therefore, different analytic and geometric methods were developed to solve certain cubic equations. One such method was developed in 11th century by another Persian mathematician and poet Umar Khayyam, who ingeniously calculated the roots of certain cubic equations by the intersections of parabolas and circles. Khayyam's work on cubics made him certain that algebra and geometry are intimately connected. He famously said, Whoever thinks algebra is a trick in obtaining unknowns has thought it in vain. No attention should be paid to the fact that algebra and geometry are different in appearance. Algebras are geometric facts which can be proved by Euclid's propositions. In 13th century, the knowledge of mathematics and algebra transferred from Arab to Europe thanks to Fibonacci, the greatest European mathematician of the Middle Ages. Fibonacci's major contribution was in algebra, arithmetic, and number theory. Through his book, Liber Ebachi, where he introduced the Hindu Arabic number systems in Europe and also the famous Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci also approximated the solutions of certain cubic equations. After Fibonacci, little progress is made towards solving cubic equations for almost 200 years, until the 16th century, when Italian mathematicians started public duels where they used to challenge each other for the solutions of cubics and earn money and fame in this way. One of the champions of these math duels was an Italian mathematician, Del Ferro, in the beginning of 16th century. Del Ferro knew a general formula to solve certain cubic equations. And with the help of that formula, he won many competitions in his life. However, at the time of his death, Del Ferro passed his secret formula to one of his students, 
phi r. Meanwhile, another mathematician, Tartaglia, also found a general formula to solve certain cubic equations. In 1535, Fior challenged Tartaglia for a public competition, which Tartaglia accepted and won. The news of Tartaglia's famous victory over Fior reached Cardano, who was an influential mathematician of the day. Cardano forced Tartaglia to reveal his formula of solving cubics. Poor Tartaglia had to show his formula to Cardano with a promise never to reveal it. However, Cardano broken his promise and published a formula of cubics in his book Ars Magna. Cardano justified his publication by a footnote to furious Tartaglia that Del Ferro also discovered a crucial solution of cubics before him. In Ars Magna, Cardano also included a solution of quartic equation which was found by his friend Ferrari. After the publications of Ars Magna, another Italian mathematician, Raphael Bambelli, solved those cubic equations which involved the square roots of negative numbers. At that time, the square roots of negative numbers were considered as unreal, imaginary, and complex. However, Raphael Bambelli and some other mathematicians managed to develop the algebras of these complex numbers. Using the algebra of these complex numbers, a great German mathematician, Carl Friedrich Gauss, proved the fundamental theorem of algebra, which simply says that an equation of degree n will have n roots. For example, a fifth degree equation has five roots and third degree equation has three roots. Note that the fundamental theorem of algebra guarantees the existence of number of roots or solutions of an equation. It does not give the value or solution of an equation. Using the algebra of complex numbers, mathematicians calculated the general formula for the roots of general cubic and quartic equations. But what about the formula for fifth degree equation or higher degree equations? In the beginning of 19th century, two mathematicians, Abel and Ruffini, proved that it is impossible to find a general formula for fifth degree equation or higher degree equation. abel ruffini theorem was a major breakthrough in the story of algebra. Meanwhile, a young Frenchman, Avariste Galois, dramatically enters the story of algebra with his radical new ideas. Galois ingeniously solved the classical problem of algebra by introducing something he called group as a set with identity and invertible elements which can be associated. Galois key insight was that the permutations or symmetries of the roots of n degree equation form a group called the Galois or symmetric group of that equation which is solvable if it splits into smaller pieces in a particular way. Galois proved that the symmetric group of nth degree polynomial equation is not solvable for n greater than 4 and therefore it is not possible to find a formula to solve quintic or higher degree equations. Galois' discovery of group was the birth of modern algebra. But this great discovery came at a very high price. We lost Galois. He died when he was only 20 in a duel. 
which might be a result of a romantic entanglement or political movement in France. The night before that deadly duel, Calva had written his great idea of group theory for the last time, with a wish of asking for the opinions of Jacobi or Gauss to the importance of his idea. After Galva, algebra never looked the same again. It is no more restricted to ordinary number systems and equations. By the end of 19th century, algebra is expanded to the study of abstract structures such as groups, rings, fields, modules, and vector spaces. Mathematicians started to define algebra as a vector space over a field which is also a ring. The study of these abstract structures helped mathematicians to liberate algebra from arithmetic of ordinary number systems by discovering new number systems of quaternions and octonions, and also the Boolean algebra, which turned out to be very useful in modern physics of 20th century. One of the giants of algebra in 19th century was a Norwegian mathematician, Sophus Lee, who defined infinite groups for differential equations similar to finite Galva groups for polynomial equations. These algebras and their representations have been used extensively by many physicists in 20th century. After Sophus Lee, the story of modern algebra enters in 20th century with a fascinating new character of a German mathematician, Emmy Nutter, who is also considered as a queen of algebra. Nutter studied and developed the algebras of rings and modules in the beginning of 20th century. She ingeniously proved a very famous theorem which links the symmetries of actions and the conservation laws of physics. Due to Nader's monumental contributions to mathematics and physics, Einstein considered her as a most significant and creative mathematical genius. Based on the work of Emmy Nader and many other algebraists of 20th century, the fascinating story of algebra continues in 21st century. Mathematicians are still curious to find deeper abstract algebras and their connections to other areas of modern mathematics and physics, such as geometry, topology, and quantum field theories. <laughs>